Vincent, do you have overtime today too? Your supper is waiting for you. Should I start eating without you? If you want, you must be a real moron if you've been sitting there waiting for me all this time. Why do you have to speak to me like that? There's just no need. Did you forget already how mad at me you were last time when I ate supper without you? That's because it was still too early then. It's 10 p.m. now. This time's different. You don't have to wait around for me forever like some lapdog. Start using your own brain and eat without my permission from now on. Fine, I will. What time do you think you're gonna get off tonight? Is this the same project you've been working on all month? What difference would it make if you knew? I was just wondering roughly what time I should expect you back. If I'm still awake, I don't mind making you something light. You're probably gonna be pretty tired. You needn't bother. If you're cooking, I'll just eat out instead. What? Uh, why? I'm getting kind of bored of your cooking lately, Helen. It's... how to put this... dry, bland, flavorless, and uninspiring. I put up with it all this time hoping you'd learn and improve, but it's just as hopeless as ever. You're getting worse, if anything. I'd rather eat out than force myself to eat your prison mush again. But I get new recipes off the internet and try making things all the time. Prison mush? How could you say that? The recipes might change, but the person doing the cooking is just as much of a flop as she always was. Your cooking just doesn't taste good, Helen. I kept it quiet this whole time because I'm a nice guy, but everyone has their limits. To put it bluntly, you have no sense. Is it really that bad? You always used to seem like you were enjoying it. What, back when we just got married? Give me a break! <laughs> Which freshly married guy wouldn't tell his wife her food was delicious, even if it wasn't? That's just how it works. Things have changed. I'm not obligated to lie to protect your feelings, or not have you sulk on me anymore. I see. I'm sorry. I can do better. I'll study the cookbooks and improve my game. I can do it! Cookbook study isn't gonna help you. We're way past that. How long have you been doing this now? You've been a stay-at-home housewife for what? Five years? It's pretty obvious you already hit your peak if you didn't improve at all in that time. There's no harm in just accepting it, you know? It's okay to admit you suck at something. Vincent, I can't help but feel you've been a little cold towards me lately. The things you say, you've become so... abusive. I do my best with the cooking, you know. I really do. I know you work hard, and I always try to make sure you have something you enjoy waiting for you on the table when you get home. You don't have to speak to me like that. It's like I'm not even human. And it's not just the cooking. You're getting old, too. Um, well, I guess I'm 30 now. I thought you were a real cutie back when you had your youthful good looks. But now, you're just a worn-out hag in her 30s. It's actually kind of sad to see how much your looks have deteriorated. That said, that's no excuse for rudeness. Mom and Dad always taught me to respect the elderly, so of course I'm going to be super nice to you as always. Well, Vincent, you're a real charmer, a worn-out old hag. You're hardly one to talk, are you? If you're going to say that about me, I could just easily call you an old man, you know. You idiot! <laughs> a man is like a fine wine. He grows in value as he ages. I'm only going to keep getting more attractive from here on out. Women, on the other hand, and I'm really sorry to have to tell you this, sweet cheeks, lose value with every day that passes by. Without your looks to rely on, you're nothing. You really should understand this by now. I had no idea you felt that way about women. This ain't just how I feel, babe. This is how all men feel deep down. Wanna know why? Cause it's the truth! <laughs> Not only that, but you're a stay-at-home housewife. Which makes your value to society lower than a piece of garbage! Garbage? Don't you think that's going a little too far? My god, you're horrible! Besides, you're the one who wanted me to become a stay-at-home housewife in the first place! You practically begged me! It's not like I wanted to stop working and dedicate my entire life to being your live-in slave. Slave?! <laughs> don't make me laugh! If you wanted to keep your job so damn bad, why did you resign as soon as I asked you to? Your life has been a breeze ever since. Seriously, you never had it so good, and you have the nerve to complain? Get out of here! I resigned because you said you wanted me to focus on the housework. And I wanted to make you happy. Plus, your mom and dad were always opposed to us both working, and I didn't want to rock the boat. 
It wasn't an easy decision, I could assure you. You have no idea how many sleepless nights I had in the run-up to actually handing in my resignation. You still did it, though, and it was ultimately your decision. Stop trying to blame everything on me. You act like you have no free will of your own. If my parents told you to jump off a cliff, would you do that? Yeah, you know what? If we're gonna have this goddamn waste of energy discussion, I may as well make it known what a complete waste of space loser you are. How you like them apples, huh? You're nothing without me, you hear me? I've met slugs more productive than you. There goes that famous charm of yours again. If I'm so useless, why were you so desperate for me to become a housewife? If you're gonna treat me like dirt, then I'll just go back to work. Oh, no you don't. The housework ain't gonna do itself, woman. <sighs> do it yourself. You really think I've got enough free time to be doing your job as well as my own? I'm a busy guy, Helen. Then, what is it gonna take to make you happy? What happened to you, Vincent? What happened to the Vincent I fell in love with? You never used to be this cold, heartless brute. You've changed too, Helen. Huh? Your face is all saggy now. You have wrinkles around your mouth too. What happened to my submissive, obedient Helen? And what the hell did I do to deserve this sassy bitch queen who thinks she has to talk back to me every time I speak? You don't have to answer. I know, it's because you turned into a jaded old hag. <laughs> oh my god. Are you saying the only value I ever had to you was my youth? I mean, I never put it as bluntly as that. <laughs> but if that's what you think, then I'm not going to argue over it. <laughs> I can't believe you're being like this. It's about time you knew your place, woman. You better make sure you work extra hard from now on to make sure I don't get completely bored of you. <laughs> Vincent, it's about the divorce papers you slammed on the table while I was eating my sugar loops in the morning. Did you sign them? Not yet. Why not? Be a darling and hurry up and get it done. Don't tell me you plan on clinging to me. We're finished. Accept it. I can't believe you do this on my birthday of all days. How could you be so heartless? I want a divorce. Whether it's your birthday or not doesn't change that. I'm not gonna play games with you. You'll get no fake kindness or insincerity from me. It might not feel great, but at least you know where you stand. Look on the bright side. Me being a heartless douchebag should make this a whole lot easier to go through with it. On the part where it says, reason for divorce, you wrote, because I'm 30? <laughs> That's why you're divorcing me? Well... <laughs> it's not exactly like that. But look, I can't deny it. Attraction is important in a relationship, babe. And to tell you the truth, old ladies just don't do it for me. <laughs> so a 30-year-old is just an old hag to you? Face it, we're just not gonna see eye to eye on this. This is a fundamental difference in the way we view the world. Sign the damn papers already and stop giving me a hard time. Why would you ever want to stay with me? You'll only carry on getting hurt. I've been doing a lot of thinking about you lately. And I realized you've been being more and more horrible to me with every year I get older. I didn't want to accept it at first, but when I thought about it, the pattern was too obvious to ignore. Oh no, did I get found out? <laughs> you gotta admit though, I was pretty nice to you until you were 28, right? Say what you want about me, but a girl will get my respect and affection while she still brings something to the table. I see. I have absolutely no objection to divorcing you. Thank God for that. That's settled then. Make sure the divorce papers are signed and on the table by the time I get home. And once you've done that, make the necessary preparations for getting the heck out of my life! I'll sign the papers on one condition. Oh, one condition? What are you talking about? Admit to the affair and pay me compensation. What the hell? Did you just think I'd sat around doing nothing these last few months? You always said you were doing overtime, and yet not a single cent ever appeared in your wages. Even if it was unpaid overtime, you were still coming home way later than your boss would ever expect you to stay behind at the office, even on his worst days. I've had my doubts for a while now. You got any proof? This is a pretty wild accusation you're making. I suggest you choose what you say next very carefully. <laughs> is that a threat? I'm saying it precisely because I have proof. You've been meeting some young floozy behind my back, haven't you? You've been cheating on me. So, what's it gonna be? I'm happy to take this through the courts, if that's what it takes. And don't think I'm backing down. 
So, make up your mind. You gotta own up to what you've done. Or shall we leave it to the judge instead? This is why old hags like you grind my gears. You go learning about things you have no business knowing, then you go making threats you have no right to make? Compensation? You've got some nerve. Me? All I'm doing is defending myself. You're the one who's cheated on me in the first place. Yep, whatever. I'm the bad guy. I'll pay the compensation, no biggie. You goddamn worn-out old hag. You're way past your sell-by date. Turns out your personality is just as rotten as your face. It's because you're twisted enough to try to pull masculine crap like this to salvage your dignity that I'm tossing you aside. <laughs> Nothing you say could possibly hurt me anymore. I've heard it all before. So this new chick I'm dating, she's got a cute face and a banging body. The most delicious pair of melons on her chest and the juiciest peach a man ever did see. Her personality's not bad either. Plus, she can cook. She's the whole package. She blows you out of the water. You probably just burst into tears from the crushing feeling of inferiority just from standing next to her. <laughs> you really think a used up, worn out, bitter old has-been like you has any hope at finding love again? Maybe if you settle for some 40-year-old fat dude who lives in his mom's basement. <laughs> Good luck with loser life. Lord knows you're gonna need it. <laughs> Think of the compensation you get from me as a cheer of encouragement to get you started! <laughs> no matter what happens, I'll be a million times happier than you make me. <laughs> Impossible! All the high-value guys are gonna be taken by young, quality women. In a sense, it must be liberating. You're so withered and past it, there's no point in trying. After all, how can things get any worse when you're already at rock bottom? That has to be a positive. Marriage isn't the only form of happiness in life. Spoken like a true loser. <laughs> you don't have to try putting on a bold front with me, sweet cheeks. I know how destroyed and broken you are inside. The only life that awaits you now is one filled with the regret of getting dumped by a high-earning stud from a major company. <laughs> you really are the lowest of lows. Marrying you was the biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> really? It wasn't all bad for me, you know. I was happy at the start. I got the privilege of enjoying you during the peak of youth, you know, before everything started sagging. <laughs> you might be a bitter, greedy, ball of worn-out flab now, but things weren't always this bad. And I'm pleased to say I got the privilege of harvesting your fruits before the drought set in. You'll regret saying all those hurtful things one day. And you know what? It's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, babe, but I have a banging hot young girlfriend, and things in my life could not be going better. Sucks to be you, huh? <laughs> you, on the other hand, you better start job hunting. But wait! Oh no! How are you gonna explain that huge stay-at-home housewife gap on your resume? Face it, you're useless to society now. Hopefully you can at least leverage that supreme arrogance of yours to your advantage. <laughs> Good luck! I'll be rooting for you from a tiny corner in the back of my mind as your ex-husband! <laughs> Long time no see! Who's this? It's me, you doofus! Vincent! What do you want? Ah, uh, no need to be so cold. Did your personality get even worse the more you aged? <laughs> if you didn't message me for a reason, I'm just gonna block you. No, wait a sec! There's a reason I messaged you, actually. What? It just so happens that I saw you by chance last week. Obviously you got even wrinklier because it's been a whole ten years. But you actually didn't look that bad for an old hag. I gotta give you some credit. I see. Then when I brought you up with a shared acquaintance of ours, she told me you were the CEO of a company now. My jaw nearly hit the floor. You sure came a long way since your days of being a piece of garbage. By being a piece of garbage, I take it you mean stay-at-home housewife? You're working now, so surely you understand. How useless and unproductive someone who's only capable of doing housework is, I mean. What a drain on society. Doesn't it just make you sick? You were young back then, so I guess I can forgive you. <laughs> I think a housewife's job is just as worthy of respect and admiration as any others. Oh yeah, that reminds me. I heard you made a company that employs housewives. What was it again? Housekeeping services? I knew it as soon as I heard. You only did it to spite me. It's obvious! <laughs> Sorry, Vincent, but this conversation isn't productive enough for me to continue engaging with. So rather than entertaining your fatuous nonsense for a second longer, how about you tell me who it was that you gave my contact information? Elena. You know, the one who managed that corporate event you and I met at all those years back? 
Why would Elena do that? She's the last person in the world I'd expect to leak my details to you. Me and some of the guys at work, we threw a big drinking party with one of our major clients the other day, and Elena tagged along. I may have borrowed her phone while she went to the toilet and had a little peek. <laughs> well, I see you're just as much of a scumbag as you always were. What was I supposed to do? You didn't tell me anything about you being a CEO now. So I had a little peek, that's all. What's the harm? She didn't even know. I really wanted to talk to you, so I had no choice. You're a complete stranger to me now. Damn, I might be too late. Seems like your personality is so warped, you can't even converse on a basic level now. Getting dumped all those years back must have really taken its toll on you. You still haven't mentioned anything that qualifies as a legitimate reason for contacting me out of the blue after ten years. Admit it, you didn't need to talk to me about anything at all, did you? I don't have time to waste on childish conversations with you. I'm blocking you. I'll also be telling Elena that you looked at her phone while she wasn't looking. Wait, I'm about to make you an offer you can't refuse. An offer I can't refuse? You're 40 now, right? You did pretty well to become a CEO, I'll give you that. But no matter how well your work life is going, your private life must be pretty lonely, right? <laughs> Excuse me? You looked somehow tired of everything when I saw you. I thought you might be in need of a little action, if you catch my drift. Well, I just want you to know that I'm willing to step up to the task. I can be your guy. Uh, what are you talking about? Let's face it, you're old, you're dried up, and you probably get less action than a comic book enthusiast. How long has it been? Years? A decade? Well, in my infinite kindness and benevolence, I'm willing to satisfy your needs for the low, low price of $750 a time. How does that sound? You know it's the best you're gonna get, so don't even bother pretending to be shocked. I know you like the back of my hand, inside and out, every solitary crevice, every hidden nook and cranny, so leave everything to me, sweet cheeks. Your mind, your body, your soul, I've got you covered. Uh, gross. It's actually impressive how shamelessly you're able to say such disgusting things. Oh. My husband says you're to go to the CEO's office first thing tomorrow morning. Go up to the reading room as soon as you get to the office. Huh? The CEO's office? Wait, what? Your husband? Yes, my husband. That means the guy I'm married to. You got married again? That's right. Why didn't you tell me that earlier? I only volunteered because I felt bad thinking you were a lonely spinster. I'm not interested in some old hag's wife. <laughs> You're the one who assumed I was single despite knowing nothing about me anymore. Well, anyone who'd marry you can't be all that much. Who is he? Some basement-dwelling nerd? A homeless guy? A drug addict? <laughs> no self-respecting man would marry a worn-out 40-year-old divorcee. He's probably fat and bald, or old, or all of the above. I know it! Did you forget what I just told you? Huh? What are you talking about? I said you're to go to the CEO's office as soon as you get to work in the morning. Why would I have to go to the CEO's office? Stop talking crap! Oh no, you're not getting Alzheimer's too, are you? The last thing you need is your wits going the same way as your looks, but I guess it was inevitable. Stop talking crap, you pathetic old bat! My husband is the CEO of your company. Huh? Does the name Elvin Mosk ring a bell? Well, he's my husband now. He's also watching this entire conversation. Gah! You're joking, aren't you? Yes, you have to be. This is all just one big silly joke, isn't it? Tell me it is. It isn't. That's why Elvin wants to see you in his office first thing tomorrow morning. You hurled your fair share of malicious abuse at me and you will be punished accordingly. Helen! I'm so sorry! I don't know what came over me! You see, I've had a fever these last few days, and I haven't been feeling myself! I... I... I think... I think I need a warm drink and some rest! I really am sorry, and, and by that I mean super sorry! Did I mention how sorry I am? And Mr. Mosk, sir, please forgive me for my disgraceful behavior! The things I said about your beautiful, kind, intelligent wife! The, there's just no forgiving them! I don't know what came over me! It's too late. <laughs> no, please! There was no ill will behind any of it! Are you really claiming you said everything you did with no ill will? That's not gonna fly with me. Regardless, whether there was ill will or not, you said what you said, and the consequences will be what they will be. Nothing changes. I'm so sorry! Look, to tell you the truth, my life hasn't been going so well lately. I've had all this pent-up frustration, and, and when I heard about how well you were doing, I took my anger out on you, 
Do I look like your punching bag? I'm sorry! My actions are unforgivable! I promise I'll never contact you again! I'll never say anything mean to you again! I heard your lover pulled a vanishing act on you after divorce. Is that true? I also heard you haven't heard from her since. Oh, could it be that she was only after your money all along? And as soon as she realized you guys wouldn't be eating out as much anymore due to the compensation you owed, she lost interest? How did you know that? A little birdie told me. I have friends in all sorts of places, and you wouldn't believe the things I hear. Did you really think you had any allies in your crowd you constantly ranted to? About how women in their 30s are basically grandmas these days? Or how stay-at-home housewives are human garbage? You even got warned once at work about your hateful remarks. I'm just the type of person who says what's on my mind, that's all. I never meant to upset anyone. <laughs> Why do people have to read so deeply into things? Ah, <laughs> I see. So you're free to say whatever you like as you never meant to hurt anyone, is that right? In that case, let's just make something clear. You're a worthless scumbag. You're a worn out, desperate, pathetic old man with no value to anyone who blew all his money on a gold digger. Your personality's rotten to the core, and you're beyond saving. You're not just a disgrace to humanity, that would be putting it too mildly, but to all forms of life in the universe. That's why no one wants anything to do with you. You've really gone down in the world, huh? You used to be so full of pride and bluster, and now look at you. A lonely old man reduced to begging for money from his ex-wife. That was just uncalled for. Oh, that's funny. I thought I could say whatever I wanted. There's no ill will, you know. I was just taking a leaf out of your book, Vincent. What's the issue? Helen, it was wrong of me to divorce you like that. I disagree. I think it was the best thing you ever did. I'm so much happier without you in my life. Really? I can't say the same, babe. I'm at rock bottom here. Work is all I have left. You can't take that from me, too. Do you really want to back me into a corner like this? Without my job, I'll have nothing. Please, convince your husband, Mr. Moss, to overlook this. Please, for old time's sake. I'll do nothing of the sort. You're the one who messaged me today. I want you to remember that. You're the one who mocked and abused me. Would you mind explaining how you're suddenly the victim in all this? I'm so sorry! I truly am sorry, Helen! I swear, I'll behave from now on! I'll never message you again! I'll dedicate my whole life to my work! I'm pleased to hear you say that, but it's far too late. If only this had been your attitude from the beginning. Unfortunately for you, it's not down to me anymore. I'm leaving the rest to my husband. Helen, please call him off! Find it in yourself to forgive me! I'll get on my knees! I'll do anything! I'll turn over a new leaf, I promise! I'm begging you! I'll clean your house! I'll get rid of the weeds in your garden! I'll wash yours and your husband's clothes! Please help me! I'll do anything! I mean it! I don't need a slave. Besides, all that sounds very stay-at-home housewife, don't you think? Finally admitting to being a piece of human garbage, are we? You reap what you sow, but you know what? I'm happier than I've ever been right now. I have a loving husband at my side, and I'm surrounded by the most wonderful children. I have a room enough in my heart to support you. You do? That's my girl. I knew you'd pull through. You really do have a big heart. Huh? Oh, don't misunderstand me. I'm not going to do anything for you. I'm just encouraging you to use the supreme arrogance of yours to make your life for yourself now. When I say I support you, I just mean... I'll be rooting for you from the tiny corner in the back of my mind as your ex-wife. The next morning, my ex-husband Vincent was summoned to my husband Elvin's office. And there, the CEO's office, he was dismissed and announced, There have been several reports of him making hateful comments about women around the office. And not only that, but apparently he'd also been harassing and bullying some of the newer members and staff. Elvin said he had no other choice but to let him go. The fact that he offered me sexual favors at $7.50 each is pretty far outside of what's considered acceptable. Conduct for an employee towards the CEO's wife who can't be said to have worked in his favor. Everything that happened to Vincent was, of course, his, entirely his own fault. And soon, it became obvious that he didn't have any allies in the company, when not a single person appeared to defend him. I have no idea how he continued to support himself after he lost his job. To be honest, I don't care. I'm just praying me and my family have nothing to do with him ever again. That said, I can't claim my feelings towards my ex-husband are entirely negative. If not for him and that dark period in my life, I wouldn't be leading the blissful, fulfilled life I am now. 
The company I set up is doing amazingly well, and I'm lucky enough to have a kind, loving husband and the most wonderful children a woman could ever hope for. None of that would have been possible if Vincent hadn't divorced me. It's not that I'm grateful towards him, but I'm grateful that it happened, and I played an important part in me moving on to the next stage in my life. The past is the past, and I don't intend on holding on to any of the negativity. In fact, my priority in life now is doing what makes me and my family happy. It's my mission to make sure my company is the best at what it does, and that my household is always full of love, warmth, and respect. Here's to the future.